Most homeowners aren't shy telling you about how awesome their home is and the perks of living in a house that they own. But they are a lot less vocal about the ugly aspects of buying a house and the sacrifices you make. And yes, there is ugly and there are sacrifices. Here's what nobody is telling you about owning a home and home buyer mistakes to avoid. You don't need to put 20% down. In most cases, with most lenders, putting down 20% is ideal or even required. This isn't always true, for example, the Veterans Administration's VA offers loans for veterans without any down payment. If your area qualifies like ours does, the USDA will also back up your rural development loan without any down payment. The Federal Housing Administration, or FHA, will do loans with only 3.5% down, but buyers have to pay mortgage insurance, PMI or MI, on those loans. Their lenders feel that they are not quite as trustworthy and riskier since the buyers don't have as much equity in their home. Buyers can expect to pay an extra percentage on their home loan throughout the life of the loan unless they get refinanced for that MI or PMI. There is down payment assistance for any of these programs, and so check with your local realtor about what grants are available to help you get into a home easier. You do need to put new lines of credit on hold. Your interest rate is going to depend in part on your credit score, and your credit score is going to get you dinged with every new line of credit you ask for. To get the very best deal and possibly afford more home, make sure you're not going crazy with new credit cards right before you start house hunting. And definitely don't buy anything like an RV or a car on credit. You may think you need to buy new furniture since you're going to be probably moving into a bigger place, but first of all, you don't need new. There's plenty of great new used places to buy furniture. And secondly, be aware that buying new furniture is going to be a line of credit. And you can just budget for that. That's not necessarily something you need right away when you move in. But that will definitely be a big mark on your credit and it could cause you to lose your home loan. So be very careful. You're not locked into one particular lender. Some people think they should immediately dive into a relationship with the first person that gets them pre-approved. There may be a better match out there for you though. And if you don't shop around, then you're not gonna find out. Talk to a few different lenders or mortgage brokers and ask them what their best deal is. See what programs they have available. What is best for you and your situation? Your credit won't get dinged for this. It will show that you've done the same um, people that you checked with multiple people in the same period of time. And so they'll see that that was all for one loan. Your mortgage will probably be sold anyway before you even make your first payment. Most lenders sell mortgage loans to a servicing company who collects a check for the next 30 years for the payment on your loan unless you get a refinance. Be prepared for a letter from your loan company saying it's sold and you have a new place to make your payments to. Don't worry about if you already got a check in the mail, they'll get that transferred over to the new company. They now have limited this to two times during the life of the loan, so you shouldn't have to worry about making a check out to too many different people. Your monthly mortgage payment includes more than just paying back your loan. Every month you'll be paying your loan principal and interest, which is usually applied before the principal, and more than likely you'll also be paying insurance and taxes in your payment, which is required by your lender. If you're not sure how much you can afford based on all of that together, it's probably not a bad idea to sit down with your mortgage broker or even your realtor to help you figure out what your options are and what fits into your budget. Neither of us want you to default on your loan, so we do want to make sure that it actually fits your budget. Lots of times, online calculators only figure that principal and interest part into your loan payment, not the taxes and insurance. So make sure you get the whole picture before you decide how much you can afford and what your monthly payment should be for the house that's right for you. School districts are important even without kids. If you're house hunting and you don't have kids yet and you never plan to have kids, it's still important to remember location is very important. School districts definitely could be more important to buyers when you go to sell your home down the road, and homes in neighborhoods with good school districts tend to appreciate better in value rather than something in a bad school district, which obviously is not going to or may even depreciate. So make sure you're considering your future as well as your present when you're looking to buy a home. School districts are also taxed differently, so this could affect your current property taxes as you live in your home even though you don't have kids in the school to support with your taxes. You don't need to spend your entire pre-approval amount on your home. It's tempting to buy at the very top of your pre-approval range, 
Remember that you're going to have to pay interest on that entire amount over many years. And don't forget about the other costs of owning a home, like taxes and insurance and maintenance. Experts suggest that you stay between 25% and at the most 35% of your income on your mortgage. So if the amount you're thinking about spending is creeping up above that top 30 of your income, that could be tough to meet. You don't want to overextend yourself. Consider the possibilities of maybe one of your of the spouses passing away or becoming incapacitated. So it's probably likely that you're going to look at homes that are out of your price range and really want to buy them, but you'll have to refrain from looking at homes just above your ideal price range and think about how nice it would be to buy instead of the disappointment of the house you saw last week. What's worse than living in a house that needs to be fixed up? Living in a house that you can't afford and you have to sell or go into foreclosure. So look if you must, but try not to let it influence your final decision making process. Unfortunately, you may get outbid. More than once, possibly. Some markets are harder than others and have more cash buyers, which can be devastating if you're using a loan and can't pay for cash for a house. Sellers often opt for cash buyers just because there's less contingencies and less likely that they're going to fail on their offer. It can be hard for buyers to experience bid after bid, rejection after rejection. So just stay strong and have faith that the home for you is out there and it will be right for you when you find it. It might not be a smooth road, but you will get there. Agents get paid on commission. By the way, I am Laura Clue, a realtor with Ozark Gateway Realty, and I work with properties in North Central Arkansas. Real estate agents typically don't get paid until the closing table when the home is officially yours. The title company will give us a check after the seller signs a deed and the buyer and the lender have paid. This is because we are paid on commission, which is based on the percentage of the sale. If you have an agent who is an upfront with you about how that payment works or is trying to talk you into more house than you can really afford, then you may want to question whether your agent is really the best fit for you. You want someone who will protect your interests and be on your side. You may want to consider talking to a contractor before closing. You probably had an inspection done during the, your due diligence process and you may even ask the seller to make some repairs. But there may be some other issues that need to be addressed that are more like maintenance issues and you could talk to a contractor about how much it would cost to make those repairs and maintenance or you may want to do some upgrades like painting or changing out the flooring. They should be able to give you a rough estimate on how much that would cost so you can make sure that it fits into your budget. Remember that once you own the home, you'll be on the hook for all the maintenance. That's the nice thing about renting. You can just call the landlord and they come and fix things. But now that you are a homeowner, you'll need to save up for major repairs like if your septic tank gets over full or the heater breaks down. You'll be responsible for making the repairs or calling someone to come and fix it. Speaking of closing, it costs money to buy a house, and closing costs can be charged to the buyer or the seller, just depending on what you agreed upon in the offer and what your state usually does. It is outlined in the offer, and so you should know up front what you're paying for, but ask any questions of your realtor or your lender and exactly what you're paying for so you prepare to have the money available at closing. Unfortunately, many of the loans available with no down payment have very high closing costs. Conventional loans, the one with 20% down, usually are pretty low, but VA, FHA, RD loans can be as high as 6% of your loan, which is a lot of money to come up with. This can be something that you can ask the seller to pay for for you, or they may tell you just to have it rolled into their loan so you're actually paying above the purchase price so that you are paying for it in your loan price, but then you'll be paying interest on it. So just remember that there's more costs beyond just the purchase price of the home. It might take a while to feel like home in your new place. You'd think that once you've gone through all of that trouble for a house, it'll automatically feel like yours. But it's not necessarily true. It may take a few weeks or even a few months before you start settling in and feeling like a home owner. So if the word, this is my house, don't roll off your tongue quite like it should in the beginning, it will before you know it. Now that you are familiar with home buyer mistakes to avoid, check out this video, Questions to Ask a Mortgage Lender. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.